Vegas, there's nothing like it. The entertainment capital of the world is also host of world-class bowling. Today, it is time for the 2019 Women's U.S. Open. From the Texas Star Lanes, five bowlers share one green, winning the season's second major and becoming part of women's bowling history. This is Dave Ryan alongside Hall of Famer Kelly Kulik, major champion Stephanie Johnson. We have five bowlers hoping for a title today in stepladder action. We start with Shannon Sellins, first ever professional TV show for her against defending champion Liz Culkin. Shannon O'Keefe looks for a third title of the season. The two seed Danielle McEwen trying for a second career major. Our top seed from Indonesia, grad of Wichita State, Tanya Raumenpur looks for her first career title. She's joined now by Stephanie Johnson. Tanya, this is your second TV appearance this season. How are we going to use your experience from the USBC Queens on today's U.S. Women's Open show? I will just really have fun and just focus on make 12 good shot. 56 games on four grueling patterns this week. You find yourself the number one seed. How are you planning on spending your time during the three matches prior to yours? I will stay loose on the practice fair and also like come in to watch the match going on, see the lane transition, and see from there. Well, guys, I couldn't get it done last year. Let's see if Tanya can. I know Steph was tough for in Orlando. Tanya hoping for a title today. Kelly, future for the sport, lane pattern today. What are our great bowlers competing on here in Vegas? It's just like she said, Dave, very low scoring pace, demanding conditions. Kind of looks like the Empire State Building. This is where the Ford Oil ends. Look at these tiers. This is where the ladies are going to look for the ball to change direction. They will start with straight angles through the front, but as they migrate inward, it will not be left to be right. It'll be more straight towards the three pin. They're going to really control the pocket as best that they possibly can. They're bowling on 42 feet high volume. Don't look for some 250 games. I would say 180 is going to be a good score on today's U.S. Open show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number four qualifier from Schenectady, New York, Liz Culkin. Schenectady just outside Albany. In upstate, the defending champion is back. All right, kid, let's have some fun here, huh? 25 years old, bidding for a third career title. The title defense is underway. Four pin lead for Liz Culkin. Great opening shot. You're going to hear some great words from me this week uh, on the telecast. Punishing, grueling, backbreaking, difficult, challenging. That's what this condition led to this week for the ladies. An incredible grind with the four different lane patterns. What a challenge. We might see low scores on our show today, Kelly. Yes, but it'll you be will. great bowling because the conditions are so challenging and it should be very competitive. Yes, it should be. Kelly, a three time U.S. Open champ herself. Four pin has the mark. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number five qualifier from Long Beach, New York, Shannon Sellins. That's Long Island. Born and raised in Kansas City. A mortgage banker, a high school bowling coach, works at a local bowling center. Oh, by the way, a world-class bowler herself. What a story. Oh, crossover. Well, she's from the island. <laughs> Almost had the Brooklyn strike there. I mean, it's a little further west from the island to the borough of Brooklyn, but has a single pin spare conversion coming up. Yeah, Dave, and honestly, the five pin was a challenging spare this week, too, for the ladies. Did see a few that went down the lane and missed it. Um, the ladies, just to give you some insight, only had six practice shots on the TV pair. Normally, they'd have all the players come over and bowl for 15 to 20 minutes, but because of the format of the U.S. Open, these two ladies each only had six practice shots. Our five C, five pin. And takes care of the mark. Shannon Seltz has been bowling very competitively for many years now. Five-step approach, slides that first step. Her key was her tempo, beautiful position, how she gets the ball on the swing. 
again, look at the athleticism in the legs and the torque in the waist right there. Shoulder is level to the head. Left arm stays completely balanced until the torquing happens. Great knee bend on the follow through at the end. the mark again on a light hit but a single pin spare conversion is all that stands between Shannon and a second straight spare and I have to admit Dave this will be a challenging show for me to analyze because the condition was so difficult the first one obviously she got left off her hand 40 feet down the lane there right around here so she's at five six she's clearly starting out around eight on the other lane notice how slow the ball is to try to change direction High volume, lots of surface usually is the key to get the ball to change direction and slow down, but they were not allowed to hit their bowling balls prior to the start of the match. Only once could they alter the surface of the bowling ball before they even took their six practice balls. Truly a complete challenge. Yes. Yep. In every way, leading up through round robin match play, through qualifying, and then to the show. A grind, 56 games, and there you see the average. It's yeah. not a big number, but that's what these tough conditions yielded this week. Good shot by Liz leading that four pin. As you mentioned, Dave, that average 206, if you go back to your normal league condition, it'd probably be 240 easily. Liz yeah, Culkin, Nebraska bowler four-step approach, starts with that right foot, kind of a little, holds the push away, gets the ball a little bit late in the swing, but short four-step right here is where the short step is, so she's really gonna try to get a lot of power off this power step and have a long created slide. Ball is shoulder height. She does slide very long. More knee bend than I've seen in the past from her, so that's great that she's working on her game. Four pin, no problem there for Liz. A win in Topeka in 2015. And then last year in Orlando at Boardwalk Bowl. This women's open. Texas Star Lanes here in Vegas. Dave Kelly, Stephanie. I am honored again to be among the <laughs> bowling royalty. Kelly, three-time US Open champ. Josie Barnes with us as well in our booth helping out Great crew on hand here in Vegas. Yeah, the turnaround time to set up the show from last night to today for this live telecast. Great crew, great production. Had a good start to match one. Last year, Liz climbed the ladder. That's a five seed. This year, the four seed didn't like it off the hand. Crossing over, and sometimes you get a little lucky. Uh, New York state of mind. We got two New Yorkers here. Why not a Brooklyn strike? Yep. So because of only the six shots of practice, there's no lane development. There's no friction. There's nothing. 12, 13 at the arrows left off her hand. The women are physically trying to create ball reaction. You can see inside it could be the, her finger. She's having some difficulties fighting a finger infection. But all the women have the same thing in common. They're looking for hold. So to do that, they have to start migrating inward to find that hold with that length of the pattern. Shannon. Now the four pin. pin keeps really trying to keep her tempo slow and consistent and calm. Are right, you looking for some great PWBA gear? Then visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. Saw Shannon look down at the footwork again on that approach. Keep an eye on that right lane, especially for her. Absolutely, and the women competed on lanes 19, I think, through 42 this week. 53 and 54 is a TV pair, so they are only seeing it. They had a practice session earlier, so they did get to practice on this TV pair. However, they just don't have as many games as they did during qualifying. Push, push, push. Four pin again, oh. that's a common theme, isn't it? Nine is good, actually, Dave, nine is great. I really want to say, I want to say it's like the Picasso pattern of the tour or um, Pollock, some of the art designs we saw this week. But that one's around board 10. You can see it, the brown indicator from 43 to 44 feet, right around there, 44 to 47 feet. It just picks up and turns slightly. There's really not going to be a lot of ball motion in the back portion of the lane. There's a four pin. I like the art references. Haven't heard that on oh. all my years of doing bowling. Yeah. <laughs> That's a new angle. I like it. Yeah, there, there. I write that one down. I saw people leave, you know, four counts. I saw someone take out the six nine of a full rack. It was very interesting how demanding they were. And with our percentage coming up, 57 half percent. Both ladies, couple lucky breaks. 
now is when they all said they had to start executing. You have to physically make a shot, forget what your eyes see, and focus on the physical part of your game. Got to hurry. Oh. It does. Oh. Did you hear the crowd? Good shot with oh. nine pin. Eight pin. Mm. A stone eight mm. pin. Not only was it, is it difficult to get the ball to the pocket, shot after shot after shot, but watch as the ball just kisses past the eight pin. Truest tap in bowling. Did you like that shot too? Just the eight remaining. Yes, she did. God. Hooks it and takes care of it. Back to step. Guys, Liz was using an asymmetrical hybrid to start. She's experiencing some early hooks, so she has since changed to an asymmetrical Give pearl ball to get through the fronts Give and, and fight away. that early hook. Now, a great point, Stephanie. The early hook, it will start to develop with only about 14 shots going down the lane, 16 or 18 shots going down the lane. You won't see as much transition. However, you do have to make the moves quick. And again, that's what the women saw all week long. When the ball all of a sudden started to fade back or fall back towards the six pin, it was a zone change. So keep watching for the women to move inward. A little too deep for Liz. Left. Crossing over again. And another Brooklyn strike. 10 pin late. It has been a theme in our first match. Watch Liz's shot. She's sliding 22, 23, 14 at the arrows. That's board 12 down the lane. The break point has to be further to the right. I think her angles need to be not as wide. But again, it comes to execution. At this point, Dave, put a curtain in front of the arrows and just think about making great shots. Two strikes so far for Liz and none for Shannon. But it's a tight match. Come on, Walt, come on. Talking to it. And it crushes the 1-3 pocket. All oh, 10 back. Her best shot of the match. No approach problems this time. 16 at the foul line, right over that second arrow. 40 feet to 43 at that brown indicator on board 10. Perfect ball roll through the pocket. I do think Shannon has a slight advantage because she doesn't have as much rotation as Liz. Her angles will be smaller. She can keep her angles straighter through the front part of the lane. We'll have more um, ability to control the pocket. As you saw, just her second event on tour this year. She is very busy with her various jobs. Oh, shoot. Didn't like it. Comes in high. And the baby split with a 310. My opinion for this left lane, I would, I would actually almost try to move right. It just seems like they're trying to jump left too quick. I think there's still enough oil on the lane because less balls have gone down that the ladies can jump back to the right. Clearly inside left off her hand. Liz is struggling on that left lane. Topography would not be a factor this early on in the match. But I think both women need to take a step to the right. Oh, hard way, hard way. Hoping for it. Does not take out the 10. There's an open frame. Our first of match number one from the 2019 Women's U.S. Open here in Vegas. We're underway on CBS Sports Network. Major number two of the 2019 PWBA Tour season. The U.S. Women's Open on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by the USBC and BPAA, who are working together to build a future for the sport of bowling at all levels. Visit bowl.com or bpaa.com today to find out more. By Pepsi, the official soft drink of bowling. And by Nationwide. Nationwide is proud to offer USBC members an exclusive members only discount on auto insurance. Nationwide puts members first. It's part of what makes us a different kind of insurance company. Nationwide is on your side. Traffic looks pretty good here in Vegas. Come over to <laughs> Texas Station. Check out the U.S. Women's Open. Match number one is underway. Liz Colton, defending champion, 14. 10 lead on Shannon Sellins. Shannon O'Keefe, who has won a couple times on tour this year, joined now by Stephanie Johnson. Shannon, you have two major championships to your name, including the USBC Queens and the tour championships. You're still missing the coveted green jacket. What's it going to take for you to win today? Just have to focus on controlling what I can control, staying in the moment, and just executing. Great. 
Back to you guys. Shannon O'Keefe is ready. Steph, thanks for that. Shannon has the points lead entering the U.S. Open here in Vegas as well for Player of the Year. Could be a second consecutive POY honor for Shannon. She has two titles, only multi-tour winner so far. In 2019, Liz Culkin wants to win the U.S. Open again. Will be easy. Second half, match one underway. Comes back out of the gate, Dave, nice and strong. After that eight pin bad break on the right lane, she pounds the pocket and 10 straight back. That looks better, Kelly. Yeah, so she's sliding 21, 22, 12, 13 at the arrows to eight at 40 feet. Clearly a really good shot. Now, I, very casual during the commercial break. She thinks the left lane hooks more, making a ball change. I think she really needs to physically throw it better. So, good so let's see if she can hit the same target two times in a row. Again, very demanding pattern. They were difficult. What your eyes see, your body wants to react to it, and your swing goes in different directions. Got to keep it the same way. Work, work, work. Yes. It does. All 10 back. And a double for Liz Culkin, first time in the match, up by 34 pins. Yeah, makes a ball change. Again, sliding 21. Oh, there's right there, 11-12. So same part of the lane that she is on the right lane. You can see the distance down the lane right here. She's on that zone, right heading towards, but splitting the 6-10 pin. Look at the pink thumb hole. It stands up nice and tall, swishy strike. She carries all 10. Seventh oh. for Shannon. Didn't look again, and that's why that baby split again with the 310. Looking down at the approach, and the footwork has been an issue with this match for her. Yeah, really struggling on that right lane to stay solid at the line. Shoulder drops in, swing gets in front of her. Again, way inside, straighter is usually greater. But when you can't stand up, you're not going to be able to repeat shots. Time. So one for two on the baby split conversion to avoid an open, which this late in the match would have been disastrous. Still down by 34. Works on a spare into the eighth frame. Yeah, and her swing, it actually gets a little bit away from her body. It doesn't drop underneath her shoulder. She's able to correct it a little bit at the bottom with her hand, makes the baby split where she missed it before in the other lane. By far, I feel a very challenging spare. Two pin loss to Liz, head-to-head -head match play. Seven pin hanging around. That look of perplexity. 18 with her feet. 11, 9, 8, 7 in the center of the bowling ball. Just doesn't have enough drive. Again, it's 42 feet, high volume. Our lane grew we put down, so the ball is not going to change direction much. Weekdays at noon Eastern, step into the jungle. Jim Rome unleashes his takes on the toughest topics in sports. It's always smack off season with the Jim Rome Show right here on CBS Sports Network. You say jungle, Dave. It is a jungle out there right now. It has Oof. been this week, hasn't it, Kel? It has you been. You know, firsthand. Very challenging conditions. I almost came out of here with no hair. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Liz. Oh, Late bump that. on number nine. Down it goes. And it's a big strike for Liz Culkin to widen her lead. Four bagger. You know, the bad breaks came with the eight pin. Now the nine pin almost stands up. She did go Brooklyn. Look at the four pin. Last to fall down. Merry go round all the way to just tickle the nine pin over. See the right ring finger and all the tape. Shannon O'Keefe awaits the winner of this one here. In the driver's seat for player of the year again. Got a long way to go, but she has bowled so well. Shannon, third seed. Liz trying to close this one out. Whoa, that's not what you wanted at all with a 210 split. She came up light in the left lane, Dave. And this time again, she looked like she executed really, really solid. Same part. As you hear, ambitious, a little bit more firmer with the ball speed. Again, look at the pink thumb hole. It's trying to stand up tall, trying to stand up tall, roll forward, just too late, light hit. 
This was a common leave amongst the women this week. The 210, the 2810, again, the Picasso or a, of artwork. There's that mention again. Yep. Can't quite kick it in the 10 pin, so it's an open frame for Liz. We're talking about the right ring finger and the tape there. An infected hangnail that started with Liz, and we'll hear more about that story throughout our broadcast today. She's been in tremendous pain and almost withdrew things were so bad for Liz Colkin, and now here she is with a nice lead. Liz uh, aggressively biting her nails on the approach to the Las Vegas airport, she said, <laughs> because it was a little bit bumpy with some turbulence on the way into the field, and it got infected and was incredibly painful. Yeah, Shannon needs to strike. If she doesn't, she's out of it. And she oh, and there's a strike and a nice response when she needed it most in the foundation frame. Yeah, so the scenario is this, Dave. If she strikes that, she shoots 204, forces Liz to get a mark. Liz, if she gets only nine on the on two balls altogether, she will tie if Shannon Sellens strikes out in the tenth frame. So power move, power shot by Shannon Sellens. Way to make a good shot when she's been struggling, especially with her footwork on the right lane. Shannon started bowling at age three, grew up in Kansas City, mom worked in a bowling center. Has been around bowling and athletics her whole life. Sister, a national champion, 10,000 meter runner and marathon runner, too. Very impressive family. Shannon needs this. Get up, get up. Got get up. No. Two pin. And that's it. Mathematically, Liz Culkin has advanced to the second round. storybook week ending here for Shannon, but one to remember for her. Absolutely, David. What's so great about the ladies' tour is it's, it's some of these events allow the women to come out on the weekends, get their feet wet, really have a chance to bowl against the best. Shannon is considered the best out here on the East Coast Tour as well. A lot of the amateur events. Four-time New York State Queen champion. She can hold her head up high as well as she performed again on these insanely difficult patterns this week. She struggled the most with pattern number four. I thought she'd overcome it because she had 24 games of match play on it. But walking out with a great experience, a good paycheck, and a great TV experience. About to close on her first house, right across the street from the beach on Long Island. Perfect. Thank you. A great week for Shannon Sellins from Long Beach, New York. She will fall shy of winning her first career title. Here today in Vegas, our defending champion is alive and well. Liz Culkin knocks off Janet Sellins in the first match in Shannon O'Keefe. The reigning tour player of the year awaits Liz coming up next. From here in Las Vegas. I was flying into Las Vegas, and Las Vegas historically has a tough descent into the airport, and the descent was really bad. Um, to the point where people were like hooting and hollering and I was getting nervous and I bit a hangnail off my ring finger of my bowling hand. Well, by Tuesday, Wednesday, the second round of the qualifying, I had an infection and I had to start thinking, what am I going to do to make this feel better because I was obviously beginning to really struggle to bowl because it's my bowling finger. And I'm very fortunate there's a couple ladies out here, especially Erin McCarthy, who's a nurse, uh, gave me some suggestions. Obviously, taping it up was the first step, so things would stop getting into the infection. Um, and the next step was to get some antibiotics on it, antibiotic ointment, and also Oragel, which is kind of weird to me because I think of Oragel being for your teeth, but it actually does help open wounds as well, and I'm able to numb it a little bit with that. So it's been tough battling that injury. I mean, you're already battling the lanes. We're at the U.S. Open. The lanes are very hard. They were very difficult, and that's how it should be. This is a major. And on top of battling the lanes, I was faced with now the adversity of battling an injury on my bowling finger. <laughs> so I, after being there, I said, you know, I'm going to tape it up. I'm going to put the Oragel on it, and we're going to give this a go. Um, and I was able to kind of settle in. It takes me a couple games to settle in, which is why I've been kind of struggling out of the gate. But once it kind of goes numb, um, I'm able to kick it into overdrive and, and get going. Amazing, Liz. Great she stuck around. Here she is, trying for another U.S. Open title. What a match we've got coming up. Ten-time titleist Shannon O'Keefe will take on Liz Culkin, our defending champion at the U.S. Women's Open. That's on the way.
the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. You're watching the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Updated stepladder bracket here in Vegas. Liz Culkin, that strike streak of four in a row. Did in Shannon Sellins' first match, 213-183. Now it's O'Keefe Culkin, head-to-head -head in match number two. McEwen, round and four, seeds two and one. We'll warm up, we'll contemplate, and prepare in every way possible. First, let's match up these two stars. And Liz is looking at that finger, Kelly. How do you think it's holding up? Uh, so far, so good, Dave. I did ask her in practice over on the side pair before the ladies even came over to the show. She goes, I said, is it numb yet? She goes, actually, it feels the best it's felt all week long. Really? So that's a good sign. Maybe all the Orogel and the antibiotics and the, the nightly routine that she's been sticking with has started to heal it a little bit. But she definitely said when she's going home, she's going to make an appointment with the doctor to get some real antibiotics to take care of it. Match number two is underway. That's right, good start. I guess the finger's just fine. Gentlemen, please welcome our number three qualifier from Shiloh, Illinois, Shannon O'Keefe. Seeking her third career major. Second straight U.S. Open TV show and sixth time in her great career she's been on TV competing for the U.S. Open, but she has not won it yet. Maybe that changes here today in Vegas. Her first shot. Wiggles the five pin. Somehow the five doesn't drop, Kelly. I'm not sure how. It doesn't. Well, you know, Dave, again, 42 feet, high volume of oil. The ball's not going to change direction. Shannon is always very firm with her ball speed. So you can see the ball at the last minute just trying to migrate. Watch out to flex. Goes to the nine pin. Usually the ball goes into the five pin. Five kicks out the eight pin. But because it deflected so much, that five pin just wiggled and stood straight still. Five, there's the mark. BWBA Twin Cities Open and the Tucson Open this year. Two-time titleist for Shannon so far. Watching her bowl in Tucson, David, was a spectacle. It, she was she bowled phenomenal all week long. I think she led the field maybe probably about 200 pins. Uh, I, I texted her the next day, and I really said, Shannon, that's the, the crisps, I've, uh, crispness I've ever seen you, if that's vocabulary word, how sharp she was in execution. So whatever she's been doing the last few years really has paid off, and uh, she definitely knows what she's doing and has the confidence on the lane when she's throwing the bowling ball. Left off her hand there. At that time, a high shot. And the six is up for the head women's coach at McKendree University, hence the purple and black colors of the Bearcats. Yes. That's 13, 14 at the arrows. Look, 12 down at the break point. You can see the ball is just at my little wiggly line there. It's just on the inside of board 10. 42 feet, so I mean, there's 18 feet left to the pocket. It will change direction and go high. Good break, though, leaving only the six pin. Mark, no problem. Looking for a third career major. Won the Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship in Richmond to finish 2017. And last year in Reno took the Queens. Liz Culkin did make a ball change starting out in this match, Dave, on the left lane. So she's sticking with the same ball that she changed to on the right lane. Let's see if it pays off for her. Do you like that call? Yeah. I did. I love the ball roll on the left lane. Let's see again. Pays off on the right. Looks good. Looks good. A little sharp. A little sharp at the end there, but trips the forward pin. Off to a double. So right now, 20 pins, and we had those strikes being 10 apiece. Again, sliding 20, 21, 12 at the arrows, 8 at the break point. Again, slight sharpness at the back. I think she's going to make a slight adjustment. She, a little smile there. There's that winning smile. Yep. Let's go back to Stephanie Johnson. You're right, Kelly. She did make a ball change on the left lane, of which she is now throwing on the right lane as well. She definitely for that great sideline report right there. You can definitely see the left lane hooks more on the front. Both ladies are a bit deeper, firmer ball speed, and that pearlized bowling ball gets through the front part of the lanes even more for her. So what she's seeing is pretty good. I think she made some bad shots first match on that left lane, but 
She's in the right part of the lane now. Good adjustment. And has the first three strikes. So Keith already got a 21-pin hole here. Works on a spare in her third frame. She talked with Stephanie in the interview earlier. It's about being herself. It's about staying in the moment. You hear that a lot from Shannon. Control what you can control. Mental game so important to her. There's all 10 back as she crunches the pocket and absolutely blasts through the rack. Shannon's game is unique because she takes her fives, her four-step approach. Ball does not move forward on step number one, so it does go down unless she hinges it in past the knee. But because of, of Shannon's strong legs, strong core, excellent athletic, physically conditioned body, she's able to generate so much power. Look at the deep knee bend with that left knee. She generates so much power, and by her extensive follow-through, she pushes the ball down the lane so easily. Yes! Backs it up with a double right there. And some emotion to boot. A fiery competitor to be sure. Can Liz remain perfect here? Great start for the two-time Team USA member. She won her first title back in 2015, and the tour changed the schedule in 2016, so it didn't go back to Topeka. She couldn't defend her title. It's the first time in her career she had a chance to defend a championship. Mm -hmm. And that really motivated her through the injury we talked about with the infected hangnail on that right ring finger. It's a big day for Liz. Oh, seven pin. Stone seven pin. You can hear in past TV shows, Liz is usually rushed the shot. She's up there quick. She's going, going pretty fast. But right now, you see when she gets set up on the approach, her eyes look at her target and focus. She's starting to, to climb into that left part of the lane. Again, right at board eight of the break zone, the break point, four pin just falls straight backward and doesn't domino effect into the seven pin. Still a good lead, though. Plastic ball, obviously, cross lane for the spare. Take the condition out of play. Seven. Well, a perfect game is over, but stays clean with the mark. A great collegiate career for Liz at Nebraska, two-time national champ. 2015 Division I Player of the Year, female athlete of the year in 2015 in Lincoln. Has continued tremendous bowling on tour. And Dave, Liz drilled two balls for the show today. The ladies could only check in 10 bowling balls during qualifying, as well as going to the catcher's round, then to the round of match play, a round of 24. So they were able to change the ball card if they wanted to, but again, only 10 balls, and Liz did drill two for the, today's show. Hook, 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 hook. You heard it her. Did. It just did. <laughs> and a tough split to deal with here. Fine. Wow, sliding 24, 25. She said to make a zone change, 14. Almost the same break point, just further outside. So she was around eight, so she's now about half of the ball further outside. But there is no friction. There is no hook back from that part of the lane. Two, ten. Start bringing her target with her. Got to bring her eyes with her. Stretch in there, and she'll reset. So the tables have turned dramatically. The First three, then nine spare. And now this split, great dual look at it. Through here in Las Vegas. Top to convert and whiffs on the two. And leaves both. It's an open frame. And a big shift. Now Shannon O'Keefe on the bench sees a lead of four pins. Look at that number, five in the last seven. Dominant. It's quite a run for Shannon. Yes, it is. Sliding Frame. 18. Carry. Looks for a turkey. Yes! It does carry the four late, but down it goes. And a 14-pin lead. Major tournaments have been a big part of Shannon's success the last couple years, winning back-to-back -back majors. Of course, the 2017 Smithfield Tour Championship, completing the road to Richmond in style. What a moment in that great venue in Virginia. That fall that last year, a 221-183 win over Brianna Cote at the USBC Queens in Reno, Nevada.
for major number two. It was emotional for Shannon that night. Looks for a four bagger. Be Six right. spring. Shot. Pretty good shot. Ten pin up. Great shot by Shannon. You can see she's a little bit firmer on the right lane. Ball speed. Lane's a little bit tighter, so she can stay on top of it, throw it harder. Left lane when the keys was being a little bit slower, softer with her hand. Obviously her ball speed was down there. Even though the left lane may hook more in the front, but again, the six pin horizontal just wraps itself right around the 10. All the ladies missed less than, I believe, 10 spares throughout the course of the 56 That's a good games. question yeah. last night you asked of all the bowlers in our meeting. Cross lane for the 10. He's got it. Got a mark, and we have ourselves a great match here. Midway point match number two. Shannon O'Keefe up by 13 with a few frames left to go, but Liz Culkin, defending champion, still has a chance not left. Join us back. O'Keefe by 13 pins midway through like match number two. Liz Culkin <laughs> talking with a ball rep a moment ago. I mean, can't make many mistakes against her, and I don't feel comfortable making no, a ball change know. right now. Because as much as it's the creed, and I love that ball, <laughs> I gotta, I have to give myself right. some sort One of time. Um, <laughs> cushion if I I'm do. going to do that. Like and I don't have one. <laughs> um, I think it's another one and one. Liz Culkin right there talking to her ball rep. Information, ball change might be the idea. That's what she did a lot last year on this show. But she's going to make a one-on-one -on -one move. She's afraid to do it. She's not really sure. She's talking about bowling against Shannon. Can't make mistakes. Don't make mistakes against Shannon. Just bowl the pins right now. Really just focus on what you do well, Liz. Obviously, defending champion. She does something well to be here right now. Trailing by 13 pins on an open frame. She's sticking with the same ball. Right lane looked good. The left lane is the one she has to combat. It's got to push. Her sixth frame. Four pins stands. Remember, Dave, nine is great. Nine is not even good. Nine is great right now. Staying in the match, only down by 13 pins. Still four and a half frames left to go. That was a big theme in our meeting with the players last yeah. night. That, look, there are not going to be a lot of strikes in this challenging oil pattern. Just yeah. stay away from the splits. She made the move on the right lane, chasing it further left inside. You can see she's sliding about 25. So with her about eight board spread, going to lay down about 18 to 15. Three board angle. Not too big. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No. Open frame by Liz Culkin. Back to back trouble for Liz, and the door wide open now for Shannon O'Keefe. Frustrations in her mind right now. You really can't miss spares, that is for sure. I said Liz only missed about 10 or less, maybe a dozen for a few of the young ladies. But now Shannon definitely has a little bit more control in this match. This was her struggling lane. Look at the win percentage chance. What a drastic shift now. It's part of our new stat feature. Our tour shows on CBS Sports Network. It's a high shot. Three, six, nine, ten. And only six down as her struggles continue. So she's hit a rut after the first three strikes of the match. Drastic change. Sliding 26, 17 at the arrows. Doesn't get it quite as far right, which you couldn't. You know, here's the trick. Ladies and gentlemen, check out pwba.com. Go to our schedule. Click on these patterns so you can see what the ratio is. 1.7 to 1. That's not a lot of oil. It's very flat. There is no room for error. And as difficult as they are, you have to make your spares. A lot to cover. 3, 6, 9, 10. And the three stands. Another open frame. Back to back to back in frames five through seven, and the wheels have completely come off for Liz Colkett here. All of a sudden, Shannon O'Keefe sees the lead on the bench, ballooned to 35 pins, and she is firmly in the driver's seat. Shannon had some of her best games against Liz Colkett this week in match play. It's got to stay clean now. That's the way to do it. You take advantage of your opponent's mistakes. Jerry Fregamano, general manager here at Texas Star Lanes, fellow East Coast gentleman. So as our New York rep representation is on TV, he also retired here in Las Vegas, one of the greatest managers. So accommodating to the women in the PWA Tour. Thank you, Jerry, for everything in your staff this week. Our ladies' pro-am was fabulous. The amount of games they must have given away was about 200 free games. Wow. 
bottles of wine, free year of bowling, one lucky fan won. Fantastic. To go up by 45. Yes. You back. Foot on the accelerator. And a 45 pin lead for Shannon O'Keefe. Shannon signed 20, up 13. Again, softer hand, not hitting it as much, but really small angles in front of her. What Shannon does so well, if you watch her from behind, she does walk right to left. So what ha happens is because you're closing down your ankle or angle or walking to it, your angles are usually straighter, so her arm goes with it. But Danielle McEwen is waiting on deck for the winner of match number two. Another four pin for Liz Culkin. We've seen that a lot. That happened a lot in our first match when Shannon Sellins was trying to avoid another open frame and <laughs> a disastrous Can't stretch. Get far enough, enough <laughs> left, apparently. Yeah, and now Shannon's the just. Ball hooks in the same spot every time I throw it. Touch right of Liz, so now that early friction. Picture, Dave, this is the best analogy I can think. Putting your foot in at the, the shallow end of the pool and then walking all the way to the deep end. That's what the oil is like on the lane. It's really shallow in front, but deeper in the back, as tight as it is. That's what the women are bowling on. I like the analogy. Follow the PWDA on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the BowlTV.com website. Keep up with the greatest women bowlers in the world. Get the latest video, highlights, and news each week to follow your favorites. Like Kelly Kill. Look at that. Follow it. We'll see you on TV soon, right? Yes, you will. Daggone it. Can't wait. I'd bet on it, too. Ball 10 back there. Went back to the ball from the first game. Shannon's definitely in control, though. Max score for Liz Culkin is 203. 258 for Shannon O'Keefe. Again, what Shannon does so well, she's controlled the 1 3 pocket. Remember, 9 is not good, 9 is great. She will most likely advance and face Danielle in the next match. Tries for a turkey here. Foundation frame already had the turkey in frames three through five to take control. And Liz struggling in the middle portion of the match with the open frames. Wow. In a groove. All ten back again. And Liz said it to her ball rep. You just can't make mistakes against Shannon O'Keefe. And unfortunately for Liz, that happened today. Yeah, and really it was the wrong kind of focus, Dave. She was really good in the match. She was following, sticking with what she did well. Trying to chase the lane as she does and, and reading what she saw. She only used two balls really in match play. But Shannon's rotation really doesn't see a lot of friction. Again, so she's able to keep very small angles, two or three board angles, control that pocket. And with the information she has now, she's going to just kind of sample a little bit with a different ball maybe and see what it gives her. If it gives her the hold that she talked about so much in the interviews the ladies were looking for. Sliding the same board. A little more left to right. Great shot, ringing 10, so. Ringing 10 there, and the strike streak, but still. In complete control of match number two. So again, see how Shannon takes that big step left on step number two, but keeps her arm swing in front of her. 12, 11, 10, 9. So 12 to 9. 12 at the arrows, which means her lay down's probably 14 or 15. 9 at the break point, again. Almost like she's shooting the three pin straight in the face every single time. Nudges the 10, takes care of it to stay clean. It's over there. Let's go back to Stephanie. Yeah, guys, I spoke with Shannon's ball reps, and because she obviously has this match won, she has decided to try a cleaner ball with some surface to see if she can get some more hold on that left lane. And as far as the lanes are transitioning, maybe a ball that she could go to later in the match against Danielle. Thanks for that info, Stephanie. Shannon's really good. She's got some taller pins there. Short pin buffers, but the ball will get down the lane. Great to sample and find her groove. This one is over. Shannon O'Keefe knocks off the defending champ at the U.S. Women's Open in Liz Coker. Danielle McEwen. The PWBA Fountain Valley Open in Fountain Valley, California produced one more epic title match as Sweden's Sandra Anderson had been unable to strike on the left lane. That is until the final stanza when she tossed three clutch strikes in the 10th 
which proved to be just enough to edge Brianna Cote for her first career PWBA title and the first PWBA title for a Swedish-born player. Who is going to win the green jacket? We got plenty left for you in Las Vegas next on CBS Sports Network. Great stuff, Emil. Thank you for that. Tour Elite schedule is coming up starting on August 3rd in Connecticut. Top 24 are going to bowl in August leading up to the road to Richmond. And Shannon O'Keefe right now, Kelly, leads the way. Yeah, she's still leading contender for player of the year again. Just off to a great start. Two titles already this year. The women in red have five titles this year. Going down the standings, Marie Jose Rodriguez made two shows. Valley Bursier from Canada. Shana Ong and Sherry Tan, both from Singapore. They will not be back for that last swing. Giselle Poss at 27,000. Sandra Gongora, some good numbers. I am just on the bubble there. Right there. So we shall see, but... Yeah, there's some great bowlers that's going on this year, and come on, Kelly. Sign out. We come on, see. Kelly. You're watching the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number two qualifier from Stony Point, New York, Danielle McEwen. That's upstate, not far from West Point. And north of New York City, another New Yorker. Last one standing. <laughs> Shannon at one point did. I mean, her and Brian lived in the Buffalo area. That's right. So a lot of East Coast representation. And then our international player. 27 years old, looking for a fifth career title. McEwen's day starts <laughs> with a strike. Much deeper than I anticipated Danielle starting out. She did draw only one ball. It was for the show today, and I believe she's using it. So really clean, pearlized, symmetric bowling ball. Shannon O'Keefe, see if she starts off where she finished. Made the ball change in the 10th frame, but going to stick with what she won with in match number two. Second match. PBA superstar Jason Belmonte is here. The two hand up from down on that. <laughs> 22 career titles. One of 15 players in history to earn at least 20 PBA Tour wins. 11 major championships. That's a record. Four time PBA player of the year. Belmo is in the house. We'll see Jason Belmonte, Tommy Jones here. A lot of the great PBA stars are watching, supporting the PWBA Tour here today. We'll see them in Vegas. Next month on CBS Sports Network, PBA Tour Finals. We have five shows live, Kelly, this year over two days. Fantastic. And July is going to be a blast. Four pin. Yeah, everyone's in town. Backing up the Women's U.S. Open is BPAA, Bowling Provider Association of America Convention. So all the greats in the industry will be here. A lot of the top players coming in to sign autographs. Really great week here in Las Vegas. Average temperature, about 102, I might add. But Shannon O'Keefe, left lane, four pin. Danielle's much deeper. Will she chase her and follow her left? That's the question I want to know. Let's get the answer. A reminder, any player who rolls a 300 game during today's telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Right lane. McEwen. Not this time. 6-10. High shot on the right lane. It's interesting. Danielle's a little bit softer with her speed. So her angles might have to be a slight bit wider. 18 at the arrows. Again, inside about 12, 13. So here's 40 feet right here. She's at about board 12 at about 43 feet. You can see the ball still continuing to change direction. 6'10. Crossing for the spare. I have to say Danielle is one of our top spare shooters here on tour, just like Shannon O'Keefe. So this match will come down to the 10th frame. That's my that's my vision. Kelly, okay, well yesterday Danielle told us. 
Hardest U.S. Open she's ever bowled in. Yes. On the backside of the West Coast swing. So very challenging. Eight straight weeks being on tour, away from home in New York. What a grind, right? Yeah, and my personal feeling, I, I usually like to talk about it, but this is by far um, the most difficult swing we've had in the last five years of tour. All four in a row. Great shot. Left lane, 60 feet to success for Danielle. Her best shot of the match. That's because of the schedule and the way things have worked out? It is the schedule. I mean, the lane patterns, when you, you, we talk, the, the main thing about a lane pattern is the length and the volume. And even though the length might be 47 feet, the volume might be low, and the ratios might be low. So when the ratios are closer in relationship, like a one to one and a half to one, or 1.3 to one, they're more difficult, they're more challenging. And uh, the patterns the women have all faced have been less than about two to one. So it does come down to execution, controlling the pocket, like the ladies say, and making your spares. By far the toughest tour season I've had. Interesting. High shot. Shannon runner up in this event in 2007 and 2015 as well. Fifth last year in Orlando. Run by Liz Culkin, who climbed the ladder. And won four to take the title. Yeah, look, Dave, I mean, she starts about board 12, sliding 21. Nine board drift, 14 at the arrows. Almost the same point that Danielle had on that right lane. But again, starting at the, the shallow end of the pool, going into the deep end, she's got to start migrating inward. She's going to have to get on top of Danielle, I believe, in order to win this match. Six-time U.S. Open champion Liz Johnson provided this week's Bowl TV highlight of the week, rolling a 300 game in the last round of qualifying, which helped her lead the field at that point in the tournament. She was right there. Contending for the TV show until the final moments, really, of last night's round robin match play. But finished out of the top five. Legend Liz, the only 300 game we had this year at the U.S. Open in these tough conditions. And the recent champs. Look at Liz, the dominant run of four in a row. Spoken by another Liz Culkin last year, but a new champion will emerge in 2019. Same glasses, different hairstyle. Just right. want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> Ball change for Shannon. It might have been the same one. Chase it left. Ten straight back for her. Let's see where she's sliding. Still 20. 13 at the arrows. Brought it left with her. Look there. 40 feet, 43 feet, board 10. You can see the yellow pin on her ball. It really doesn't change a lot of direction. I mean, she's got a lot of tilt. Danielle sliding 25-6 up. That's got to go left. 6-10 again. Came in high. Could have been worse. It's almost backwards, which the women saw this week. When the ball hooks you, it's instinctly to, to move left, to move inward, to keep chasing it. Ladies ball down, which means they went to a higher RG ball, a cleaner cover bowling ball, something that went longer and then broke down the lane. It was a guessing game, all 10 frames of every game. Danielle's game is very strong. What's interesting about Danielle, watch her feet. She walks heel-toe. So the approaches really don't come into effect until she gets to the foul line. Heel-toe there, moves the ball late on step number two, really in step number three. Long stride on number four right here. So right here, look at that. Both angles are close together. Head is straight, torso is really tall, left arm is calm. Great knee bend, drops the shoulder in. I mean, really, almost textbook how pretty it is. Case in point. All 10 back, it'll pick. For McEwen, the pins had no chance. Both ladies on Team USA, Liz Colkin on Team USA. Tanya Ramapur on Indonesia, but that percentage of win right now, very close, 57-42. Great match. Shannon had a really high score in the last match, 230. Brand new stats feature this year. Our tour events on CBS Sports Network. Pretty cool. You can hear that oh. noise of her oh, thumb oh, squeeze. Oh, oh, oh. On. Double wood. 2-8. Two 2-8. Eight. Two eight. Yeah, if you hear really closely, she just kind of can oh, hear oh. her thumb squeak in the ball and she just tries to hold on to a little bit more. Sliding 21 still, 13, same. Same target, same break point. Just might accelerate it a bit more on that shot for the 2-8. This title, Shannon told us last night, is what she's chased her whole career. 
has eluded her so far. 2-8, double move, covers nicely, hooks it in for the spare. Maybe this is her day to finally get that green jacket. It's possible, Dave. There's uh, only a few women bowlers that have won the Triple Crown. Uh, I know Carolyn Dorn Ballard, who was a Hall of Famer, who finished in the top 24. She finished second this couple of times, trying to chase it down. Shannon, of course, the other one. Um, you know, I think Wendy McPherson, Alita Sill, Liz Johnson to win the Triple Crown. There's only be a handful of women that have done it. Danielle McEwen, just a bit left inside of her. She's looking for her second major title. Join us on CBS Sports Network. Who will win? Second match in Vegas. Great match. Stephanie Johnson, you spoke with Mike Devaney, Danielle's ball rep a moment ago. What did he tell you? Yes, I spoke with Mike Devaney during the break and they mentioned that Danielle since she's following a transition she's likely going to be using her ball speed to her favor less surface of the shinier ball to control the front part of the lane and get that ball through that hook spot early okay. point on Stephanie she's further left than Shannon is she's using a higher RG ball cleaner cover like you said with more surface she's trying to find fresher lane conditions fresher oil the only way to do this to continue to migrate left but again, try to get the ball to tip up in the back and hit the one three pocket. She's leading by two pins, working on a strike. High both times on this right lane. She's got to make a move. Much deeper with her slide, goes away from it. Two pin. Missed the pocket. Two pin stands on a light hit. Trying to go up by 12 pins. That was exactly the right idea. So she was sliding about 25 there. She's 27, 28, 18 at the iris. Doesn't quite get her hand around it. Whereas before she's been on the inside over here, that last time she's away from it. If you want to create hold, the angle has to get steeper, What she did. She's going to have to kind of bring her eyes with her and maybe bring her ball speed up a bit more so the ball can stay on line. As for two pin, as for spare. Fourth place last year. At the 2018 U.S. Open in Orlando, lost to Liz Colk, and everyone did that day. 246, 172. She told us last night, as we see the win percentage chances, mental approach, good mindset, is what will make the difference to out execute Shannon O'Keefe today. We'll find out. She can finish here. 10 pin. Solid on the left lane. So she's really good on the left lane. Two strikes and a 10 pin. The thing is, she's got to finish on the on the right lane. You can see the green and the bowling ball on the label. The lime green kind of stand up, roll forward. Danielle has more end over end roll, where Shannon is a little bit more sideways on it. The difference is, it's probably about three quarters of a mile per hour differences in their ball speed. Ten pin and the mark. Anyone's match here today in Vegas. Two titles already this season. One in Tucson, the other one I believe in Minnesota. She's just been a dominant force here on the women's tour. Here, see, she's starting on board 13, but sliding 21. Eight board drift. Her second step is way far left, but again, what it does is it brings her swing with her. Crossover step, step left, then kind of walks it straight. Again, because of her ball speed being firm, her rotation and tilt all together combined, ball doesn't change direction much, allows straighter angles through the front. Oh, for the turkey and the 19 pin lead. Eighth frame, you yes. time. Flat ten. Ten pin. <laughs> Keeps this tight.
as a spare. This is just a start. On CBS Sports Network, East Hartford, August 3rd, 5 Eastern. The Wolf will open the next week, also at 5 o'clock Eastern time, then Orlando on August 17th. Part of our great coverage of the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Great shot by Danielle. That's an answer, Kelly. More in front of her. Arm swing was through the path. Only down by eight. So good news is eighth frame she struck there. She's going to finish on that lane. Again, heel toe, heel toe. She was sliding 28 before. Big key for the women. Same thing, 27. Last time you could see the ball leaked way right of that indicator at 40 feet. Beautiful coverage by our lane guys, our cameramen. Thank you so much for that close-up. Really great to tune in on the label of the ball as it rolls forward through the pins. First strike on that right lane for her. Can she back it up with a double? Foundation frame time. Oh! Big shot. Blisters through the rack. And the double puts her back up by two. That one, her arm swing got a little bit more in front of her. Look at the ball, gets to 12 at the back there. That's when you say, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Thank you. Woo, you can see her eyes go for that one. So now she found the hold that the women were looking for. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, that was hold. Shannon would like to flip the script on that number. It's a good shot. That's how you do it. Yep. Yep, so down low, crossover step, second step goes left. Swing a little bit outside, but she tucks it underneath. Again, Shannon's further right of Danielle, so I think it's a slight advantage, especially on this pattern. She can strike out here for 227. Danielle can strike out for 229, so it's very close, ladies and gentlemen. What a match. Shannon. I do have to compliment Shannon because what she's so good at is being so aggressive with her follow through. And she said what really worked for her this week was uh, a little bit softer hand at the bottom of the swing, not so much ball speed. And she's proving it right now. Still go double nine to win by one. But Shannon O'Keefe putting the pressure on Danielle on that right lane. She will have to double in the 10th frame, no matter what, to give herself a chance to advance. Keith, 225. Not the finish you wanted, but what a game overall, 225. Danielle Here still needs to double. Danielle. One strike so far in the right lane. Josie Barnes reminds us one for four in terms of striking there. Two and seven necessary for McEwen to advance to the championship match. Got a wrinkle. Oh. There's one. It wasn't cleanly in that one three pocket, but it was enough. Woo. I said it's got a wrinkle. 18 at the arrows, at 10, exact same point. And Dave, all week long, the women did this. They threw shots. Just when you thought you were lined up, the ball did something different. I mean, it was chaotic what happened with the reaction of the ball and ball go down the lane.
Gotta have it. Gotta push. She's got it! Oh. It's the double she needed. Still need seven pins. Same part. Okay, that one was definitely left with the indicator. The tracer down there at 12, like it was on the left lane. You know, but again, you wrinkle light. The natural tendency is want to keep it more in front of you. She still needs seven. Six would tie. Five would lose. Seven plus wins it. That Danielle good. McEwen has ten, has the win over Shannon O'Keefe to advance to the championship match. Danielle does it. Steps up, needing a double and seven. How about three in a row? And a win for Danielle McEwen. Tanya Raumenpour awaits in the title match. The U.S. Women's Open is brought to you by Go Bowling. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all of the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. By BowlerX.com, the online bowling supply superstore. Free shipping, free returns. Simple. BowlerX.com, for the love of bowling. And by Cubica AMF, making bowling amazing. There is our Kelly Kulik, three time U.S. Open champ, and Liz Johnson, a legend. Part of U.S. Women's Open history, an event that started as the BBA National All-Star Match Game Championships back in 1949. Time for the title match. The moment we've all waited for here in Vegas. I have to say, Dave, this is interesting. And for the fact is, Tanya chose Danielle to start, so Tanya will finish on the right lane. <clears throat> I'm sorry, on the left lane. And I really think that's been the most confusing for, we saw with Liz Culkin in some of the earlier matches as well. So it's going to be a great championship match. But Danielle comes up high in the left lane and leaves the baby split the 310. It's anybody's match. Big early conversion to avoid the open frame. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number one qualifier from Indonesia, Tanya Raumenpur. <laughs> Wichita State grad. Top seed, first shot. <laughs> Great shot right there by Tanya. Now again, she is further right than Danielle. Not much. Danielle's going through about 18 at the arrows. Tanya's at 13 on that first shot. Any player rolls a 300 game during today's telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. On these tough conditions, a major challenge. Second shot, Tanya. Ten pin. There goes the 300 game. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Stephanie Johnson. Speaking with the ball reps, Tanya is going to be throwing a solid symmetrical ball. She will be playing right of Danielle. She's more end over end, and she plans to use that early hook to her advantage. 
Early hook and what that means, folks, kind of similar to urethane. They use a lot of service to get it start up and just stay on its path. It's lined to the pocket. So with her end over roll, she's going to get it start up, not change too much direction. And really, the ball just roll forward into the 1-3. Spare there gives her 20. Frame number one, Danielle, who saw just strike out in the 10th frame to defeat Shannon O'Keefe. Looks to continue her strike fest on the right lane. Third time on TV this year. Tops on the tour. Looking for her fifth career title. <laughs> Crossing over. I'd say. You had to catch breaks like that, really, all week long, because like we saw Liz Colkin, stone eight pin, stone nine pin, seven pin, there's stuff you weren't rewarded when you did execute. So the lucky breaks needed to happen. Wow. And just Way like that. off the mark. Yeah, one, two, seven, eight, ten. You know, your body wants to, to correct. The last one she missed in front of her went Brooklyn. That one she definitely got away from her. Sliding 26, 27, 18 at the arrows, but where she was just a pinch further outside, looks like she really did accelerate slightly more at the bottom of her swing, and that's why the ball just didn't slow down enough. We did see some four count leaves. Five, she got half. And converts. A lot to cover, and she does. What a shot by Danielle McEwen. And a big spare. Danielle really is one of the most accurate spare shooters on tour. And Team USA as well. Great execution just on the left side of the head pin. Head pin bounces off the sidewall, kicks out the 10. Often enough, a, an unfortunate break was when it wraps itself right around the 10 pin. One, two, seven, eight, ten. Wow, impressive. Tanya's third frame. Seven pin. Tickles it, but not enough. Four-step approach, the body lean goes forward first, ball moves forward, pass the knee on, on step number two. Tanya, compared to the other ladies, has a higher backswing. Look at her eyes looking forward down the lane. Knees aren't quite together as much. Shorter slide, not as much. Steeper swing from the top to the bottom. It's got a hook. And it does, seven pin. An extra layer to the story, as Josie Barnes reminds us, they are roommates on the road as yes. well, so <laughs> great friends. But today, competitors. Yeah, and I'd really like to know what the women went through this week. We bowled on three different patterns, eight games on each pattern, 37 feet flat, 40 feet, 40 feet it was, and it was 47. Fourth pattern was 42 feet. It's like playing Augusta, Pebble Beach, Shinnecock, and then going to Sawgrass to play the final round. That's so all. That's all. It really, Easy. yeah. Difficult isn't even the word to describe it. On a scale of one to 10, it was a 20. <laughs> Touch high, leaves the 4-7. Online right there, just a bit soft. So now the adjustments as the lanes transition again. Well, again, she said speed. She slid in the same part of the lane, almost the exact same part that, sh part that Shannon just finished off on. Now, again, high on the head pin there. You can see the ball. It's black ball, but I saw it turn and change direction. If she's going to stay there, she's going to have to pick up her ball speed. If not, she's going to have to chase Danielle and get this inside with her. 4-7 spare. That's it. She's a graduate assistant coach at Mount Mercy College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Getting her master's in strategic leadership is Tanya. Now to graduate from Wichita State. Wants to run a business one day in the U.S. In between Tucson and Fountain Valley, she was writing a paper for her master's degree. Wow. Just, yeah. Guys are busy. McEwen responds. And her fourth frame working on a spare. Her second strike of the match. In the bowling industry, we talk about, you know, the strike pocket, the ball rolling through the pins. Here, you just want to hit the pocket. And whatever happened, happened. Sliding 28. Again, she's much deeper than Tanya. She's about four or five boards deeper at the arrow zone. Great label location of the ball as it starts to stand up and roll forward towards the pins. 57-42, just like last match, really close. It should come down to the 10th frame again. Got to love it. Go by 13. Two pin, wow. Really, some good shots. Good shots, you can hear the, the frustration in her voice. Like I said, I wanted to pull my hair out. So I'm <laughs> glad you didn't kill. It's different I'm for everybody. I'm glad you did. Yeah. 
It really was a grind. It, it's like you're trying to make steak out of chopped meat, and there was just no way. Two pin, got it. Danielle won the 2015 <laughs> Tour Championship in Arlington. USBC headquarters beat our Stephanie Johnson, 233-205 that day. And Tanya, fourth at the Queens in Wichita, season's first major. Dasha Kovalova, also a Wichita State grad, won that day as the top seed. Good execution by Tanya. Firmer balls in that right lane. Only down by three in frame number five. It's interesting, Dave, what I said about golf earlier. You know, sometimes the golfers have the one club and it's too long, but they just kind of soften up their swing. Bowling's similar if the ball's too much. You know, you can let your swing be a little bit softer, be a little bit firmer, make the ball go a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. So a lot of comparisons you can have. We only had 10 clubs in our bag this week, though. Doubles up, baby. The challenge is endless at the U.S. Open for the women to try to make this TV show. And Kelly, Tanya Ravenberg takes very detailed notes, and she wants to do this by the book. She does, Dave. She's read a lot of information over the past year. Uh, journals are great. Many of the women started using them on tour a few years back. Kind of reiterate their goals, what they were looking forward to, what their positive things that occurred during the week. Not so much what they did wrong, it's what they did right, and really emphasizing that so they can key in on their physical skills much faster, get lined up quicker, and again, just build their confidence overall. Here we go. Half a match to determine major champion. And a 10 pin for Danielle McEwen. Yeah, Danielle talked to the ball reps during the commercial, and if you heard her, she just, they said, get back right, pick up your ball speed. Don't try to, you know, play. There is no friction in the back. There's that deep end of puddle of oil in the back. So they moved her back a little bit to the right, pick up the ball speed, not open the angle so much, get it through the friction in the front. And there, right there, is a great shot. Six pin just laid in front of the 10. Danielle so good about controlling the pocket. Again, good spare shooter. Probably one of the most accurate ladies on tour. Both these women are due for, for another title or for Tanya's first title. Either one could win it coming down to the 10th frame. But as you see, Danielle in her rookie year won the Smithfield PWA Tour Championship. She's won last year in Fountain Valley. She's looking to add many more titles to her resume. Good shot. Seven frame, all ten back. As she blisters the rack. Right there, so 12-13. Really closed angles to the pocket. It would almost be like a fallback shot, but a really tight fallback shot. 2-0 head to head with Danielle, match play. Every shot from here on in, a big shot. Common Burr. <laughs> Only shrapnel remaining. Those pins had no chance. Donna certainly made the most of her trip from Indonesia, qualifying the last two major tournaments. She qualified third in this year's Queens, losing a thrilling match to Columbia's Clara Guerrero, another Wichita State grad, 242 to 232. It's 15 hours ahead in Indonesia. Tomorrow, if I have that right, one. That means Jeannie's I have to go to watching work. closely, <laughs> following. That's got to push. Oh, dread it, big four. Left off her hand inside the target. Watch right here. Yeah, 15 at the arrows. Thought it could have been a, a runaway Brooklyn or a crossover strike as much as inside she got it through her target. Richard Nixon stands up. Big four. Almost impossible to convert. Four seven stands, open frame. And look at our score. All even. Bolt TV delivers live multi-channel coverage of the PWBA Tour, Team USA and USBC Collegiate and Youth Tournaments. Plus, watch hours of new instructional videos, classic bowling, telecast, and behind-the-scenes content each month 
Visit BowlTV.com to subscribe today. Bowling lives here. McEwen strikes. Danielle does it again. Brings back with a double. Now plus 10 pins in the eighth frame. She gets a finish on that right lane, which she did in the last match. Max score for Danielle, 239, Tanya, 219. It's amazing, too. Tanya came off that one shot. She was smiling for the three-bagger. Gets over to the left lane. Purely execute it. Just bad break through the face for the big four. All of a sudden, that balloon got deflated. Danielle's in control again. Two frames left to go. Looks for the turkey to go up by 20. Read it. Oh. It did. You could see just off her hand, it Two, was four, right. Just didn't stay under the ball enough. Kind of fans it out to the right hand side. Watch here. Watch your hand at the bottom re release. Yeah, just more acceleration. And when she accelerated, the hand doesn't get around it quite as much. 2 4 10. That's a Renoir, by the way, Dave. <laughs> Again, the reference. I love it. Really tough conversion here. Big wow. shot. Chops. Leaves the 210. It's another open frame, and she's down by seven after Tanya opened. So again, Dave, I hope you don't mind my analogies and the fans out there, but it's kind of like the Mount Everest of patterns. You go up, you come back down. You go up another level, you come back down. You get the double, you get the open frame. It's just constant up and down. That's got to hurry. Get there. It didn't hurry. One, two, eight. Lays behind. So Bouncing soft and inside. Lead. Yeah, soft and inside the left lane. Accelerates more on the right lane. And like I said, there there's so many adjectives you can use. Difficult, challenging, insanely backbreaking, puzzling was for me. It just not sure. But the one, two, eight keeps with her strike ball. We'll hook at it so the ball has enough energy to continue rolling to take out the sleeper eight pin behind. Good spare from you. Nice cover. And it keeps yeah. things very interesting yeah. here. Yeah. Heading toward the 10th. Yeah, so so Danielle can only strike out for 202. 179. Tanya still needs at least two two strikes, two marks in the 10th frame. Do, uh, double and four. Thank you, Josie. Josie, soon mother to be, such so good at our score side. Josie Barnes is on it. She is. The numbers in close matches, and this is a close match. A double and four will take home her first ever tour title. And her second tour title is to uh, win their first title as a major. How about that? Does she have the first? That looks good. Yes, she does. Best shot of the match. Perfection. Perfection. Tanya took a re-rack before that shot. Gives herself a little more time. 14 to 12. Rolls forward. She's taking another re-rack. Second re-rack. Players are allowed two for every match. A third one is the tournament director at her discretion. Tanil Milligan, our great tour director out here. Extended time for Tanya. Maybe make Danielle wait a little bit more on the bench. Another good shot. You bet. Oh, no, it's a seven. It looked like that was another strike for Tanya Ramanpur. Instead, a seven pin stands. Wow. Well, she it spares this. Close. Look at this shot, folks. Just like the last one, 14 to 12. Watch the four pin. Two pin hits the four pin, bounces across. Seven stands by itself. 199 score. For Tanya, Danielle needs, I believe, a double and eight. Here we go again. To win. We've seen this act before in the last match with O'Keefe, a double and seven, and she struck three times. Now a double and eight. Needed for Danielle McEwen to win her second career major.
Does she have the first? Yes, she does. She's so calm. 12, just enough. Head pin bounces off the sidewall. Watch the head pin. Into the four. I don't know if that was the five pin that slid over and took out the seven pin. Kind of crying. Oh, boy. Just means you're passionate and you love the game. It's a good shot. Has another! Back-to-back -back jacks. And now eight or more will win it for Danielle McEwen. Laser focused. for the winner next. Danielle McEwen, a major champion again, joined lane level by Kelly Kulik. Thank you, Dave. Danielle, your second ever major championship out here on the PWA Tour. What does this moment and feeling feel like right now for you? This is an absolute dream come true. To win the U.S. Open, the hardest tournament there is to win. And this week was the hardest week I've ever competed in. So to walk away with this trophy means the world. Well, you put on a spectacle because of the two strikes in the 10th frame. But here coming in to present the jacket, the green jacket, your first one ever, Brian Borowski, treasurer of BPA. Congratulations. Thank you. We have BPAA. Yeah, thank you for keeping the green jacket in New York State. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and Mark Martin from USBC Board of Directors, the trophy presentation. Congratulations, Danielle. On behalf of the United States Bowling Congress, it's my pleasure to present you with the trophy. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Martin. You got who would you like to thank and for all your success this week? Oh my God, there's so many people I would like to thank. Storm, Bill, Barb, thank you for believing me from the beginning. Turbo, high five, my reps, you guys. I wouldn't be the bowlers, the bowler that I am without you. My family and my New York crew, PWBA, Texas Starlings, USBC, BPAA, Nationwide, Pepsi, Go Bowling, Bowler X, keep it game at. Thank you. Thank you. Your 2019 U.S. Open champion, ladies and gentlemen, Danielle McEwen. Congratulations to Danielle, 201, 199. An incredible match as she wins the 2019 U.S. Women's Open. Be sure to join CBS Sports Network Saturday, August 3rd at 5 Eastern 